Boys in the Hood wasn't a party record, it was hardcore. A tough, uncompromising lyric of growing up in the midst of gang culture, with guns, crack and the prospect of a short, violent life. Neither glamorising the life or passing moral judgement, Boys in the Hood was the prototype for the all-star group that Cube, Easy and Dre would then put together to capitalise on its success. Niggas with Attitude, or NWA. Ice Cube and Dr. Dre drop some history behind the making of Boys in the Hood. Got to witness the strength of street knowledge. Dre had introduced me to a dude over a... Uh over Jinx's house one day, named Mary. This was about, it was either early 85 or late, I mean late 85 or early 86. It was around that time. And, uh, you know, he seemed pretty cool. You know, Dre knew him and stuff. You know, I was rolling with Dre all the time, so I, I rolled with him and stuff. And just was hearing him talk, He, you know, he was starting to mess with, he was starting to mess with Lonzo. But he wanted to do the same. He, you know, uh, Eric always, he never wanted to, like, be on somebody else's stuff. He always wanted to, like, start his own stuff. So I think he was just, like, hanging around Lonzo, which was Lonzo the Wrecking Crew, trying to see what he knew about independent record labels. Doing the book. So he had a group called HBO. And, it, and that group was a group that was from New York. That Dre had met, and Dre wanted to put him down. Lonzo didn't want to put him down, so so Easy was gonna put him down. Dr. Dre. And I knew Eric had a few chips, you know. I knew he had some change from hustling, you know. So um, he said he'd be with it. He wanted to check him out. Actually, it was it was Eric and um another buddy of mine named Layla. Layla wasn't with it either, so he left. It was me and Eric in there. Eventually, the HBO guys they left the studio. It was me and Eric in the studio, so I talked him into doing the rhyme. The song was Boys in the Hood. But Boys in the Hood was originally meant for HBO to record. Ice Cube explained. Easy, uh, told me to write a song for him. So I wrote a song, I wrote a song called Boys in the Hood. They didn't want it because I, I was from the West Coast, they was from the East Coast, and, you know, East Coast was dominating. So what happened was Dre convinced Easy to rap. Never the greatest rapper, Easy E's version of Boys in the Hood was, however, an underground LA hit. And this convinced Easy that there was a market for a defiantly West Coast version of rap that didn't ape the New York sound, but told it like it was on the mean streets of LA. I talked him into doing it. You know, he was pressured. He was like, yo, I ain't never rapped before. I can't do this. So I eventually talked him into doing it. You know, he put on some dark glasses and we cut the lights down and, you know, and he did it. Next day, you know, we had a hit record. Yellow remembers just how much Boys in the Hood blew up. Eric, he was never a rapper. Never. And Dre convinced him to rap it. And then that little voice, that unique voice he got, took it over. That's what started it. Once it got to K-Day and Greg Mack played it, it went number one like, seven or eight nights in a row. The legendary K-Day was LA's only 24-hour hip-hop station until newcomers came along and changed the format in March of 91. The station's most prominent DJ, Greg Mack, remembers meeting Easy one night at a club. I remember we were doing a, uh, uh, a promotion at a club called Acasa, a club which was mostly Hispanic in downtown LA. And it was a Friday night. We were doing a live thing out there on the radio station stuff. Easy and uh, Dr. Dre had brought him out because Dr. Dre was uh, doing mixes for K Day at the time. So he had brought Easy by and said, you know, this is a guy that's trying to get in the business. And, you know, what can you tell him as far as, you know, what he needs to do and what kind of music he needs to come with? And uh, basically, I listened to Boys in the Hood, which he had on his uh, headphones, which he was walking around with. And I said, well, you know, it's not a bad record, but uh, you need to clean up the language a little bit. You know, I said, it's not a matter of selling out, but you need to, uh, you know, take the, the cuss words out in order to get on radio. So I think it took about um, a week and Easy came back and he had a clean version of uh, Boys in the Hood. 
which I'd been hearing on the streets for at least a month before that. Everybody was bumping it. So it was like something we didn't even think about. We just put it on right away, and the response was immediate also. And it, just, it just took off. Boys in the Hood may have seemed like an overnight hit, but it did need a little push in the beginning. Dr. Dre knew that the group liked the song, but he didn't know if anyone else would. So he decided to get his hustle on. See, what we did was um, we went down and we got the fictitious business name, put it in the paper, came up with Ruthless Records, and we used to go down to a place called Macola. And what we used to do is we used to sell the records ourselves. We didn't have no distribution deal or nothing. We would go down and have like box, about two boxes printed up. You know, it was 50 comes in a box and costs a dollar to print, print them up. You know, so we spent a hundred dollars and go sell them at different record stores and swap meets for like 250, 275 a copy. And you know, we just come up on the money like that. Eventually, we took the money that we made on Boys in the Hood make the first N.W.A. record. Ice Cube also credits Greg Mack of K-Day for N.W.A.'s initial success, starting with the station's decision to play Boys in the Hood. K-Day had a big, big uh, part in just blowing us up out here because the, the record had a domino effect. You know, it wasn't just like, bam, it would start blowing up in L.A., and then start blowing up in San Diego, and then Fresno, and then Phoenix, and then Denver, and Vegas, so it's just start just spreading through the country like a virus or something. So K Day was a big part of that for giving us the initial spark. DJ Yeller remembers hitting the road with Easy to promote Boys in the Hood. Eric had like rented the station wagon because we had a little motion to it with salt and pepper, UTFO, somebody else. We did like twelve little shows in Seattle and Vegas. We was there. We, that's how we started. Just doing shows with him, off of the Boys in the Hood record. That record ended up on Easy's 1988 debut solo album, Easy Does It, which went double platinum and was released simultaneously with an album featuring Easy, Dre, Q, Ren, and Yella, together known as Niggas with Attitude.